Hello everyone, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and welcome back to yet another factory IO tutorial in which we're going to be using the compact logics sitting on top of my head in order to program a sequence related to what we've done in the previous tutorial. And in this case, we're kicking this up a notch. I'm going to be using and showing you how to use a lot of different instructions when it comes to your PLC ladder logic. And what I'm talking about is the basics, XICs, XIOs, OTEs, latches, unlatches, but also timers, moves as well as sequences and as you can see what we accomplish here is we produce both of those parts on the same robot and then we are going to be putting those parts together in a final product as you saw there are some issues which i'm going to be walking you through and in this case i have not finalized the logic in which i need to release this part but ultimately what we're expected to do if you disregard some of those small mechanical issues is this finished product, which is the assembly of both a bottom as well as the top part. So if you're looking to learn how to program PLCs, if you're looking to see what a troubleshooting process looks like, what it takes to create a sequence of these steps from scratch, then this tutorial is going to be right for you. There's going to be many ways to accomplish what we've set out to do. We're going to try and take the simplest approach. We can certainly set up a station that's going to identify between a lid and a base. But what I would like to create is a request system. So that means that if I don't have a lid, I'm going to tell the robot to produce a lid. And if I don't have a base, I'm going to tell the robot to produce a base. I want to set up conveyors that are going to be on separate sections. So here I'm going to drag out this two meter long conveyor using the Y shortcut key. I'm going to position that next to the one that we had before. I'm going to select that conveyor and do control C, control V. I can place the second conveyor right next to it. And the idea is that as parts come out, they're going to be rolling into one of the two conveyors, depending if they are a lid or a base. Once again, just to mention this really quick, you can use a vision sensor. So I'm going to just drag that out. And if you look inside of the configuration menu, you can select if you want to see a blue base, green base, metal base, blue lid. So essentially you can identify what type of a product is in front of the sensor. I'm going to delete that. And as I said, make a simpler way to uh, manage the system. And obviously it's not going to be the most efficient and it's probably not going to be as scalable. And so I'm going to use a pivot arm instead that, as I said, we will have known parts coming out and we're going to be requesting specific parts. So there's going to be no need to identify them. I'm going to also rotate my pivot arm and I'm going to place it such that I can detect uh, when the part is coming in and then I can pivot it into one of the two conveyors. And so at this side, I want to capture those parts and I want to use a pick and place machine to compress them together. So in this case, I'm going to use this positioner. I'm going to also raise that in and I'm going to place that right there, just like that. Actually, do we need to place it a little bit further, just like that. And I'm going to place the opposite positioner on this side. So I'm going to rotate that using the Y key, raise that using the V key. I'm going to place that next to the other one on this conveyor belt. And I also want to be able to, in the case that I want to count those parts, I want to be able to detect them. But in this case, it shouldn't necessarily be a problem. So let me just add a sensor that will allow me to do that. But I'll have to see in logic if that is actually necessary. So I'm going to just raise that so that I can place that on my conveyor. And hopefully this makes sense. And we'll have to maybe adjust some of the mechanical components. I have not tested this yet. So this is going to be the first implementation that uh, we're going to be doing. And I'm going to slightly rotate the sensor because I want to be able to detect the uh, position. And I'm trying to see if I can reduce the length of the beam. Let's see here. There we go. And I want to rotate that maybe like so. And I think that should be perfectly fine. So we should be able to detect the component once it is inside. I'm just going to extend this a little bit. I'm going to copy paste a sensor and I'm going to place that right there. And I'm going to change the position like 
that. And once we have both of those parts, we should be able to execute a compression. And then let's see here, I want to, I want to just move it not inside here, but I want to be able to adjust the position of my sensor like that. So it is somewhat symmetrical. Let's see here. There we go. So we're able to detect both parts as they come out of our robot. And I want to test the system manually. So just like you would do in a real world scenario, when you're working on a manufacturing system that you're designing for the first time, what's typically going to happen is you will have a startup period and you will have the opportunity to work with your mechanical team to understand the requirements of the system, but also to tweak certain parameters to tell again, your mechanical team to adjust maybe the brackets on those sensors. We have something that's fairly crude here, but that is a necessary step in the real world environments. And then the last item that we need is the pick and place. So the pick and place is going to allow us to pick up one side of the base and then place it on top of the other. There's going to be two flavors of them. So there's going to be the big one that allows you to work on boxes. And there's going to be a small one, which allows you to work on these uh, components that we have been deploying with our robot and I want to make sure that we are positioned correctly here so I believe this should be like that and as I said multiple times now we will readjust and we're going to have to test maybe I'll test off camera a little bit to save you the time but ultimately this is going to pick up one item on the left hand side place that on the right hand side and then hopefully we have a conveyor which I'm going to place right here that will carry out the output. And let's see if I can just position that a little bit better. Like so. And so we can raise that pivot as well. I'm going to press play and I'm going to allow the system to create one item. Then I want to toggle the system and create the other item. I'm also going to remove some of these elements while we're waiting and I'm going to turn the pivot arm as that part is coming in. None of my belts are currently actuated. So what I need to do is I need to pay attention to what is coming out and I need to actuate the pivot arm. And I, at this point, all I'm looking for is the mechanical constraints of these parts. So the first one should definitely be coming in very easily, but the second one might catch on some of the other sensors. So I want to make sure everything looks good. So I'm going to toggle. So this, as you can see here is a lid. And I'm going to also force this belt. So I'm going to select this belt. I'm going to select that belt. Let's see here. So we can go all the way in. As you can see, the sensor is currently detecting my lid. And so I can effectively, I can keep forcing this belt. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't impact this part. But now I need to pay attention because I'm going to have to, first of all, force the other belt. But I also need to ensure that as this part is coming in, my pivot arm is going to pivot that into the other cell. And let's just take a closer look at how that's going to perform. And of course, it should be good enough. Again, it is not perfect. It is good enough. We have both sensors that have activated. In my logic, I'm going to have to stop the robot because it's continuing to build up plates, which is not something that we need to do. So in my logic on the PLC, I'm going to have to stop the cell I'm going to have to throw this out. And what I'm going to have to do now is figure out how we can essentially pick and place this in order to assemble the uh, part. And I want to walk you through the manual steps that you would need to do this because you need to ultimately understand what's going to take for us to assemble this. And ultimately, this also walks us through the sequence of steps that we will need to execute on the PLC side. So we will clamp the part. We can then release, I believe. We can then clamp the other part. part. This can be done simultaneously. Of course, we can then release. And now we need to assemble. So in this case, I'm going to select my pivot arm. As you can see, there's going to be quite a few things. So pick and place Z. In this case, I need to pick and place Z. I need to grab, I need to unforce, then I need to extend. Then I need to force this. 
and as you can see we have failed because of the positioning i believe of the arm so i'm going to try this out again So let's try it out one more time. I want to make sure that I get this down in terms of the sequence. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So both components are currently placed as we would expect. We need to return the clamp. Let's see here. We need to make sure that we clamp position one and we need to clamp the other side. We're going to then lower this arm. So that's going to be Z. We're going to, we're going to grab, we're going to release, we're going to move on X, we're going to move on Z. And as you can see, now we have made a solid part. And at this point, I should be able to release. And now I need to raise this plate and we have the finished product obviously here we can activate the conveyor so i'm going to select the conveyor force that in and as you can see we have the finished product again you can make this in one green one blue but ultimately this has become a finished product that we've created on the robot this is now a single component that we have created and assembled inside of our process so pretty cool in my opinion let's take a look at our plc and see what kind of steps we need to take in order to automate this process so in this case we're going to have to modify the program that we wrote last time and that's because we don't want to have parts coming out one after the other we want to be able to request two of those parts assemble them and then request a next set of parts and so in the previous case what we've done is we ran the conveyors but we also produced we forced a start button on the robot whenever the parts were uh, not created and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to modify some of this logic so the start push button is going to remain the same we want to start the system we want to be able to run all the conveyors but we don't want to run the production cell so i'm going to delete this branch i'm going to re-enable this rung make sure that everything is good the next item is I want to make sure that all conveyors are running as you saw me test in factory IO. There was no issue with running all the conveyors continuously. So really my logic needs to be just waiting for the parts to come in and then assemble them once everything seems to be okay. Next, I also want to change the toggle. So remember that we need to be requesting first a lid and then we need to be requesting a base. So what I'm going to try and do is we're going to wait on both sensors not having that part and then we're going to request one once the first sensor has its part i'm going to request immediately the other it's possible that the timing is going to be off because remember that there's a delay between that sensor detecting my part due to the length of the conveyor and the robot starting on a second part so there's going to be certain inefficiencies that we will address a little bit later so but for now we want to create a system that works and then we can optimize that a little bit later so how can we handle all of this io the first thing that i want to do is i want to start working on the sensors and this is going to be a exercise that we've done in the past so this is going to be my diffuse sensor 7 again i want to not get lost so this is going to be machine center out and i'm going to call that mco and this is going to be belt one part detection again for me at this time it doesn't matter if we're making lids if we're making bases we can certainly tweak that that should not be a problem so belt one part detection i'm going to press enter and here i'm going to do the exact same thing mco dash belt two part detection and i'm going to press on enter so once the sensors are free or there's nothing abstracting them we need to be requesting new parts and i'm going to go into my file drivers and i need to make sure i map them as you can see i'm running out of inputs as well as outputs actually only three left so how can we figure this out i need to first of all disconnect i'm going to go into configuration and you'll notice that we have only 16 inputs so i'm going to change that to 32 I'm going to change outputs to 32 as well. I'm going to press on enter. 
If we go back to our PLC, you'll notice that it's now a lot longer. And so we have all of the available inputs that we can use on this side and a lot more outputs as well. I'm going to reconnect and we're obviously going to get an error that is something we need to take care of once we get to that specific logic. But I want to detect, first of all, the sensors. So part one detection and belt two detection. And this is going to start my sequence. I want to keep the sequence simple. So what we're going to do is use a series of move instructions as we go through each step inside of our logic. And this is going to be my input number 15, and that's going to be belt one. And let's see here, can I copy that? Does it look like it? That is perfectly fine. So let's see here. I can also create my inputs right here directly in my logic. So I'm going to say, let's create a new rung, control D. So this is going to be MCO logic start. I'm going to label it as such. I'm going to paste this in. This is going to be number 15. Remember that we're going to have to right click new Solos PLC, B input 15, Boolean. And remember that the scope must be PLC in order for factory uh, IO to work. Otherwise, that's not going to connect to a program scope tag. I'm going to press on yes. I can also change the descriptions MCO belt one part detected. Perfect. And I want to, first of all, I want to make sure that this is okay. So if part one and part two, let's just create both of them at the same time. So part, so input number 16, new input, perfect. And I'm going to copy this and paste this here. So belt two part detected. We're going to add a move instruction. So I'm going to change that move a two into my part part assembly sequence step and this is going to be an integer so new part assembly sequence step this is going to be a double integer on the program scope tag that's perfectly fine let's paste that in i'm going to play this as well press on yes and in this case i do not have anything inside of my sensors. So it should immediately move a two, I believe, into my integer. Actually, this needs to be the opposite. Instead of XICs, this is a mistake that I made. So it needs to be when it's not detected. So XIO on both of them. I'm going to replace that press on yes. And so we are in step number two, as indicated by the move instruction. But as I said, what I want to do is I'm going to save the program but I also want to double check that factory IO did in fact take both of my inputs. There we go. So that's perfectly fine. And here, if I'm in step number two, I want to create my first part. And remember, how do we create the first part? Well, it was the run bit that we've deleted just a moment ago. So in this case, I want to create a rung and hopefully I can in the real world, if I send a run signal, it should immediately energize the output. But since we are a latency driven or once factory IO reads the tags, it may take a little bit of time. So in this case, I'm going to use a timer and I'm going to set this 11. So robot cell run. And I'm going to say if equals. So let's see here equals. So this is going to be an equals instructions so if my part assembly sequence step is equal to two. Let's actually change that equals. Then I need to send an output to run the robot cell, but I only want to send that running signal for let's say a second. And how do we do that? As I've said, we can do that using a timer. So I'm going to branch out of this. Again, we are still in the step. We're going to start a timer. So I'm going to drag out any instruction, change that to a T-O-N, and this is going to be my first timer. So MCO, let's say T1, I'm going to right click, new MCO T1. Let's see here, tutorials, timer, perfect. And my preset is going to be 1000 for one second or 1000 milliseconds. Accumulated is going to be set to zero. And in this case, I'm going to say when it's not done, 
then I want to be energizing that output. Now, of course, there's going to have to be some sequences created in my PLC logic to unlock this because you can immediately see that this is going to be starting to count up to a thousand and we're not going to be able to um, release that timer since it's going to be done before I press play. And so how do we do this? Well, if our system is turned off, I want to be able to write a different step inside of my part assembly sequence step. So how do we do that? If I am not running, so in this case I have here running, I want to add a step and I guess it's not the ideal place to add it. Let's see here. Let's add it above here. So if I'm not running XIO, then I want to be able to move a zero. And this should only execute when the system is running. So in this case, we're not locked in to that tag until we turn on our system. And therefore the robot should not be producing any parts uh, until that time. So let's test this out. If there's nothing that's covering our signals or our sensors, we should be able to send a one second signal to the robot to start producing parts. So let's take a look at what this system is going to look like inside of factory IO. And you'll see immediately the mistake that I've made is that we forced a lot of different bits here. So I'm going to have to release both of the bits. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to release pretty much everything. And you'll notice that the robot is going to start producing those parts. And hopefully as soon as the part is at the sensor, that's going to be the only request that we do. So really what I'm checking here is that we're only going to make one single part and then we're going to wait for the next sequence before anything else is initiated. And so if I go back to my logic, you'll notice that we are not forcing the run of the cell. And so in my mind, this should not have the robot create a second part, but factory IO has done stranger things. As you can see, everything looks good. We are sending this part down the lane. We are not enabling the conveyor. That is an easy fix. We can rename these conveyors and we can proceed with the logic. So at this stage, we have received the first part. Remember that we need to pivot the arm in order to get the other part to go into the other side, but we also need to request the production of that second part. And so that's going to be a couple of steps. So number one, pivot arm needs to change, but we also need to toggle the switch that we've implemented last time through the logic without the use of that switch. And then we need to wait for both parts to be in place. So let's go back into our logic and see exactly how that needs to be done. So remember here is our toggle. In this case, it is set to be producing lids. We don't particularly care until we get to the third step. So when does the next step start? And in my mind, that is when the sensor has been blocked inside of belt of part one. So I'm going to paste that condition in. So here I'm going to create a new wrong. I'm going to, in this case, create an XIC. And I'm also going to check that this step is equal to two and we can transition to step number three. So I'm going to place this here, so step number three. And as I said, what happens in step number three? Well, first of all, we need to remove this wrong and I'm going to say produce lids is going to be enabled. If step number three is currently enabled, we will produce lids. And let's see here. So if this is equal to three, we will be producing lids. We also need to send the request signal once again. So we need to run the CNC. And in this case, since we've already got this OTE instruction, we want to be using something a little bit different. So instead of using the OTE, I think the easiest approach is to use a latch and unlatch. And I know that I've mentioned this could cause problems, but in this case, I need to be able to send that signal to my conveyor or the CNC in order to produce a part. So that's going to be a workaround that we can do. So in this case, I'm going to say, if it's not done, we're going to set a latch. I'm going to edit this wrong. So OTL. And once the timer is done, I'm going to latch that or unlatch that back out. So let's see here. So it's not done. And here it's going to be X I C. Then in this case, I can relatch or 
unlatch the bit. And I need to copy this logic all the way into my other step so that we could start producing the same exact thing. So here we have equals to three. I'm going to branch out of this and I want to, let's see here, so done. I'm going to just copy paste the exact same structure and I obviously need to change the timer reference since this is, since this is going to be a different timer. So in this case, MCO T2 not done. I'm going to change this to T2, the same bit. Timer two, again, we can readjust these if needed. That's why I'm creating separate timers. Timer two is done. I'm going to unlatch this. I need to create a new timer, of course, inside of tutorials, perfectly fine. And so in the third step, we're going to request that part, but we're also going to ensure that we are requesting the other type of part than what we've done in the past. I also want to take care of the conveyors. This is something I've mentioned, but we didn't necessarily create the logic for it. So if I go back into factory IO, I've got a couple of conveyors in this case, that's going to be conveyor that is called belt one, belt two, and then discharge. So let's go back into our drivers and find those conveyors. So belt one, belt two, and then discharge. And let's see here. So that's going to be out 13, 14, and 15. So 13, 14, and 15. So copy this in 13, 14 and 15. And we're going to have to create those bits. So I'm going to right click new Boolean, make sure it's inside of the PLC, not tutorials, right click new Boolean. And I'm going to lazy out on labeling these for one time in my life, because ultimately we're not going to do anything with these conveyors. They're just going to remain running if the system is running. I'm going to enable this entire sequence in place and I want to make sure that we are indeed requesting different types of systems. So I'm going to just toggle, let's see here, toggle this really quick. So we are in step zero. I want to go back into factory IO. I want to disconnect, reconnect. Everything is good. I'm going to go back to my scene. I'm going to press on play. And in this case, I need to enable the uh, robot cell production. So let's do it this way. I want to make sure that everything is done as we would expect. So both of my sensors are not toggled. So hopefully we can go into step one. Let's double check that everything looks good. So the timer has finished counting. So it looks like we need to increase this maybe to five seconds. And let's see here. So I'm going to just toggle the timer manually. This timer also I'm going to change that to five seconds. All right, so we are going to create the first part just as we've done in the past. In this case, I'm still not pivoting. So I'm going to enable this manually, but I want to make sure that we are getting one part. And then once the sensor is blocked, we are transitioning into the next step just as we should before we request the second part. So let's make sure that that part is right before we move on to anything else. So the robot should wait until we get this part all the way to this sensor over here. And hopefully we can send a request to go to the next step. Let's double check everything. It looks like we are not transitioning. So part one detected is not coming in. So let's see if it's the other, if we made the mistake of belt one detected. The sensor is definitely Oh, it looks like I mixed up belt two and belt one. So that is fine. I'm just going to shift that out in the logic. So let's see here. So instead of 15, that's going to be 16. That's okay. Let's make sure we compile everything and we go back to our scene to make sure that everything is transitioning. Okay. So we have a five second request. We need to make sure that we have switched to the type of product we're producing and that it comes out as a different one. At this point, I'm also going to force the pivot arm because in this step, we should be redirecting the parts into the other conveyor belt. And so if everything works correctly, we should be able to get, let's see here. So there we have a base. And in this case, we have a lid. So perfect. We are on the next step of our automation process. And this is going to go into the second cell of the uh, conveyors. 
All right, so we definitely need to bring in this pivot arm. So I'm going to rename this as well. And that's going to be MCO dash pivot arm. Good. Next, we also need to make sure that we have the uh, all the inputs and outputs for this setup, which is not going to be extremely trivial. But ultimately, we need to clamp this belt one. So I'm going to say MCO belt one clamp. Next, we have the MCO dash belt two clamp. And we also have the pick and place here. So I'm going to say we need the place zero Z. Let's see here. MCO place Z axes. Next, I have the grab. So that's going to be MCO dash place grab. And we obviously need to extend as well. So the X axis. So I'm going to call this MCO dash place X axis. I'm going to press on enter. And let's see if we have forgot anything. I also want to run the conveyor on this thing, but that's not a huge problem. We can probably energize that in the software. So I want to make sure that I get all these tags. So we have pivot arm and then we have the two clamps as well as the three axes. So let's go back into my drivers. And in this case, I want to make sure that we have the two clamps. I also want to add the pivot arm. I also want to add the grab as well as the X and the uh, Z axes. I believe that's all we truly need in order to finalize this. Actually, one thing I did forget is going to be the rate, the raise of the positioner once we are done. So position one raise and I'm going to call this MCO um, raise belt. Actually, belt to raise, belt to raise. I'm going to press on enter, go back into my driver and add that last component. So belt to raise. I also want to remove these forces. Let's see here. I want to remove the force, remove the force to enable that inside of my logic. Let's one second. I want to make sure that I have the driver selected. An easy way to do this if you're using Windows, I'm going to use the snippet tool and I'm going to capture the components here in order to be accurate with uh, my logic. So the next step at this point, we have a photo eye that will detect that the part has completed. So in this case, I'm going to say belt two part detected, and this is going to be belt one. Again, I mixed this up. And so I'm going to press this as 15 and I want to change this. So this is going to be belt two part detected, press on enter. And this is going to be belt one part detected. All right. So at this stage, we are in step number four. I want to actually modify this because in this case, we need to have both of the parts present. Otherwise, there is an error. That's not something we're going to capture in this specific logic, but I want to make sure that that is created. I also need to make sure that we have the outputs figured out. So remember that I had copied the sequence of outputs. This is in my snipping tool. I'm just going to show you that right there. And so I need to be able to add the clamps, the pivot arm. And so in this case, when I'm creating the second object, I need to make sure that the pivot arm is energized. And that's going to be inside of the step number three before we reach step number four. And so if this is equal to step number three, this is where I would need to toggle in this output. And I do want to go back to factory IO just for one moment. And I want to double check where that lies. So I have belt one clamp and that's going to be 16, 17. So we're going to start with 16. In this case, I'm going to define that directly inside of my controller because I have many tags to define. I want to make sure that I have the right items in place. So Solus PLC Boolean output number eight, it should be a lot higher than that. So 15 and then we have 16. Let's see here. 
So this is going to be my clamp. This is going to be 17. I'm just going to create all the tags and then we can label them accordingly. So that's going to be the pivot arm place grab. So that's going to be 19. And this is a little bit tedious. There's, uh, I don't think, a workaround for doing this. In the real world scenario, you should be able to declare a lot of these tags inside of a dent and sort of simplify the process. But in this case, so let's just see here. So 16 was my, and last but not least, 23. So once again, we're going to finalize all of this and make sure that it works correctly. So place X axes, this should be place Z axes. Then I have place, so this is going to be belt to raise. All right, so we have everything we need. We need to energize the pivot, as I've mentioned in the other step. So let's go into our logic for factory sim. And in this case, while step three is enabled, so remember, we have not energized both eyes. I want to make sure that I energize. So I'm going to create another branch. This is going to be an OTE instruction, and it's going to be the pivot energize. I'm going to compile all of this before we get to step four. I want to once again test our logic. I know this has been extremely tedious, but I want to make sure that everything is working as expected. Let's just double check. Currently, we are in step number two. So I want to disable the system. Again, we can do that via the stop push button. I'm just going to cheat a little bit here. And we should be back to step zero. If I enter factory IO, I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to reconnect. Make sure that all of the outputs are correctly connecting to my PLC. I'm going to press play. Nothing should be running. I want to enable this conveyor on the pivot arm. This is something that I didn't really take care of in the logic. Normally, you have pivot arms that sort of take care of themselves. In any case, this is just a small item. I'm going to press on start and we should be enabling a bunch of different processes. So the robot should pick up the first part and it should make it into a base. And then once that gets to the photo eye, it should be able to be made into a lid. So let's see if that works as expected. So we've immediately noticed that the pivot arm has changed and that is because we are waiting for the second part to come in. It's going to go in the other conveyor and once both parts are in place, we can position them according to the pivot arm or the pick in place so that it can then assemble them into a finished product. So let's look at the step right here, which is going to be the second part coming out and then going through the pivot arm. And there we go. So we are at step number four. Next, we need to compress both of these arms and then pick in place to finalize the project. It looks like we do have an issue if I stop factory IO, but remember, if we're not fiddling with a normal manufacturing process, there shouldn't be any issues in these steps. Again, they, this can certainly be fine tuned. This is not the most optimal way of creating a lot of this logic. I'm doing this a little bit on the fly, and this is only my first run through this. Ideally, once you finalize this, you can refine what is being done. But so in step number four, we need to take care of a couple of things. So once again, I'm going to create a new rung. I'm going to copy paste this equals, and this is going to be if equals to step number four. I need to, first of all, I need to energize both of those arms that collapse on my step or on my parts. So let's take care of that. So that's going to be, I believe 16 and 17. And so I'm going to change that to 16, belt one clamp, belt two clamp. We can put them in series. And the next step is going to be to enable the gripping and then placing process. And how can we do that? Now we can create a lot of checks in this case, but all I'm going to do really is sequentially enable those items. So we are in step number four. We actually, we can cheat a little bit. So instead of an OT, this is going to be a latch. Uh, there shouldn't be any problem with this. Again, this is not something I recommend doing. We're going to latch these in and then we're going to transition to the next step. So this is going to be step number five, which in this case is going to be to pick up the first part, but that's going to be to lower the arm so this is going to be step number five. I'm going to copy this in. Uh, let's see here. So create a new rung. 
place this in. So step number five is going to be to raise, or I mean to lower the arm, which is going to be the Z axis. And so I'm going to say here, I'm going to latch in the Z axis, and that's going to be 19 if I 21, the Z axis, but we need to wait a little bit before we go to the next step. So we latch this in and we start a timer. So T on MCO underscore MCO underscore T3. And we need to wait because again, there is an action that takes place in the physical world before that arm gets into position. So I'm going to right click new MCO T3 timer, and that's going to be inside of my tutorials. Click on create. Preset is going to be three seconds. Again, this is something we can adjust based on our tests. And then once that timer is done, so here I'm going to say XIC, timer is done, MCO3.done. I need to transition to the next step. So in this case, for step five, I'm going to place that move. This is going to be step six. And now this is going to be really easy because I need to copy paste this rung. So in this case, I'm going to now energize the um, the gripper. So that's going to be 2019, I believe. Grabber, I'm going to enable timer four. So this needs to make sure that it's grabbed. I'm going to right click, create a timer. Tutorials, timer four is done. And so this is going to be so five, six, if we're in six, then we're going to go to seven. Next, I need to retract the arm. And so we are in step seven. And we need to make sure that we retract the arm. And retracting the arm would mean to unlatch the Z axis. So let's see here. So this is going to be unlatch OTU, unlatch the Z axis. We also have, so this timer is going to be, let's say one second. This is going to be timer five. And I'm going to right click new timer five. This is going to be inside of tutorials. And this is going to be three seconds once again. So at this point, we have the first part raised on our arm. We need to then jog this arm in position X. And then we need to lower the arm to combine both of the pieces. So at this point, we are in step eight. And step eight is going to be to extend the arm. So we need to latch in OTL. I believe it's the 20, the X axis. Perfect. That's going to be T6. And again, we can create an array of timers. That is not a main concern. So step six, three seconds again. And at this point, we're going to go to step number nine. I also forgot to correct some of these timers. So this is timer three, timer four, timer five. Yeah, we're going to have timer six. Next, I need to re-enable that last Z axis. So I'm going to once again, copy this step right here, paste this in. We are on step number nine. So remember, if we are on step number nine, we want to lower the arm, combine the two pieces. And at this stage, I would like to double check that this logic actually makes sense. So we're going to move into factory IO in just a moment. I'm going to create this one last timer. As long as the sequence actually works, I think it should be fine. Let's double check the steps again. So this is going to be step number 10. Can we get to this step number 10? And if not, where are we getting stuck inside of our PLC logic? This is a fairly straightforward sequence, so I don't anticipate too many issues, but there are quite a few moving steps inside of factory IO. So we need to double check that everything is looking okay. Just as I've done in the past, I do want to toggle the stop key because we are not running that scene. I'm going to switch over to factory IO and let's once again test that everything is running correctly. So I'm going to press the run button and we should be going through the sequence. So the first step once again is going to be cre to create the first part.
Well, it looks like we've already made one mistake, but we are still on the right process or at least the right train of thought. It looks like mechanically we have just closed that arm a little bit too soon. And so this is just going to get stuck. So let's correct that and run through this one more time. So that mistake was made on rung 22. And the reason why I know this is because we have two sensors that energized and then on the next step we're going to latch in both of those items so what can we do about this well instead of moving immediately we're going to create the same structure that we've had on the bottom and we're going to create a timer here so i'm going to add a sequence here or a branch onto which i'm going to put the move instruction and let's see here so we're going to start a timer so t on and if I am not mistaken, we have created timer, let's see, MCO T4, T4, T7, so T8, MCO T8, MCO underscore T8. I'm going to press on enter, new timer 8, that's going to be inside of tutorials, perfectly fine. In terms of time, maybe we give it two seconds, I think that's fine. Once again, we can adjust that. And once the timer is done, and only once it is done, we can move to the next step, which is going to be step number four. And so everything looks good. The last piece. So in this case, we are placing the arm. We need to release the arm and then we need to release the finished good. And so in this case, I want to say that we go back to step 11. So I'm going to copy this, paste this. And actually, we need to release the uh, the air first. So the grabber is going to be on latching first. Let's see here. So OTU. This is going to be timer number nine since we've created the eight over there. And let's see here. This is step number 10. And then we're going to go to 11. And I think at that point, actually, we can release everything. The arm should be able to come back and we can release both of the other arms but also we need to release the part. So let's see here. So I'm going to de-energize all of those components before we release the part. So let's see here. So we have the grabber. We also have the Z axes. Uh, let's see, unlatch this. We want to release the X axes as well. We wanna make sure that everything is unlatched, which is going to then repeat the sequence once again. And of course, I also want to unlatch the two clamps. So I'm going to copy this in and paste it right there. And so this unlatches everything, but it doesn't release our finished product. So I'm going to create this as T10. So this is going to be the last timer. So new T10. And that is going to be timer inside of tutorials. Perfect. That should be good. The preset, in this case, we can make it two seconds. It doesn't really matter since we are unlatching absolutely everything. 11, we're going to step number 12. And step number 12 is going to be where we release the final product. And so let's see here. So this is going to be 12. And then belt to raise is going to be the last after. So it's 22. And that's going to be the last output we have programmed inside of our system timer let's see here so this is going to be timer number 11 and i'm going to make sure that we place this as a timer for two seconds that should be plenty of time and this is going to be done and once this is done so timer 11 actually i think i forgot to change some of those timers we're going to go back to state zero, which is when it's going to wait for both of those plates to be clear. So let's say done. And let's see here. So here I need to change this to timer 10. Perfect. And I want to double check that first timer that I did change. So I want to make sure that timer eight, timer eight, I'm going to finalize this logic. And this is hopefully going to be the last time we test our system, which is going to now assemble both of those components together inside of factory IO and release the final product. So let's take a look at the simulation. And actually, before I do anything, I do want to unlatch. Uh, let's see here. So I do want to unlatch all of those components that are currently latched in. So first of all, we are not running. That is fine. 
I am going to unlatch them manually in this case, but ultimately once we run through the sequence without any issues, it should unlatch on the final step. And here actually I made a mistake. I copied this in without changing this to an OTU. So I'm going to make that modification OTU. Perfectly fine. Let's compile the program one last time and go back into factory IO and ensure that everything in the real world corresponds to what we've created inside of the PLC. Well, it looks like we've made one mistake and that is switching the bases as well as the lids. So that's going to be the last thing that I adjust and then we can run through the sequence. So we can solve this in one of the two ways. We can either swap what we produce, which is lids first and then bases second, or we can simply change the pivot so the pivot can either redirect at the beginning or at the end. So what I'm going to do here is actually change the pivot because I believe it is the easier option. So this is going to switch back the pivot once we are in step one. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to remove. So I'm going to remove this branch and I'm going to add this to the other sequence, which is going to be to request the cell. So that's going to be step number two. And I'm going to add that right here. And that should be perfectly fine. So instead of doing that in step number three, I'm doing this in step number two. Let's copy and compile everything in and double check our program one last time. All right, so hopefully this time is going to be the right one. So we're going to pick up a piece of raw material, present it to the CNC, and we're going to be assembling that both parts. All right, so it looks like we have completed the part. It looks like there were some little mistakes. We are not unlatching for some reason this arrays. And so we need to make sure that uh, once the material is back into position, we do unlatch it. So I'm going to actually force that really quickly. So here, raise. I'm going to release it. But inside of my logic, I just want to correct that as we watch the second component being made which is going to be in step number two. So if we're running, both of these parts are undetected. And this is the scary part, or I guess the challenge with latches and unlatches, and that's just the nature of the beast. I'm going to unlatch it right here. So OTU, and I'm going to compile this logic, press on OK. And we should be able to create the second component in a sequence. Again, there were some timer issues that I've noticed while the part is being assembled but that still did not matter. We're still able to put together a complete part and the sequence should repeat itself in order. So once that gets there, it should once again assemble. It looks like this goes down a little bit quick. This goes up fine, but then once it assembles, I think it drops it way too quickly, um, but it looks like it assembled just fine. So let's see once again. Yeah, so it uh, unlatches really quick. And in this case, I had raised, so let's just double check that we are not unlatching it once again. So remember, we are in the last step and I had just latched that in. So of course, it's not going to release the step. So I'm going to raise that once again. And the process should repeat. In any case, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you next time.